Again, I'm, I'm glad you're here, and I'm so thankful for all of those that had to sacrifice, take time off work and all that, but that's what we want to do. Where'd Bernie hide to? Oh, we want to continue to pray for Bernadette. Nobody really knows uh, what she's gone through in the past couple of months uh, with her brother and uh, sleeping over there, taking care of him, being caretaker, being absolutely everything she could be. And so Bernadette needs strength. She needs prayer. She needs, she needs God's guidance. And uh, I, I'm, I'm in total agreement. Brother Bud said we need a, a vacation. I said take it. So, you know, and and uh, sometimes, sometimes just to get away from things around, you need to do that. You need to recoup your strength and and all of that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that that's what uh, Sister Fran and I are going to do. Uh, we this will be our last service until uh, May the 11th or March the 11th. Uh, <laughs> woo! No, I can't stay gone that long. I can't stay away that long, but. Uh, March the 11th, we'll be home on the 9th. Um, we come in on the 9th, and uh, and we'll be we'll be here on Sunday the 11th. And uh, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, just take a time away to do nothing. And uh, praise God, that's that's some of the things I. I I, I just, I, I don't have words enough to say that I'm so thankful. I've been, I've been so blessed by you guys and what the Lord has done for us. And uh, so uh, we want, I'm sure that you guys can take care of me. You got the same Holy Ghost I got. So, uh, you know, I, I believe in leadership. I believe in, I believe. I believe the key key thing, the real thing. I was I was thinking as I was um, meditating on this situation. We always got something in the world going on, you know. Sin sin gets rampant in people. And this kid that did this shooting down in uh, down in Florida, the first the first thing that struck me, the first thought that struck me when I heard it was, no father. That was the first thing that struck me. No father. And I thought, Lord, what are you what are you talking about? And you know, it wasn't that he wasn't taken care of. The kid was adopted, him and his brother. Uh, the mother just died uh, a couple of months ago. He was about to inherit eight hundred thousand dollars. That would have been his half. His brother's going to get the other was going to get the other half. It was one point one point uh, six million in that family. So it wasn't money. So money doesn't make you happy. And uh, it, it it was the more I look at it, the more I begin to realize there's a greatest need for fathers. Fathers in the churches, real fathers. We got pastors and teachers. We need more than that. We need fathers. We focus a lot on apostles and prophets, but what we really need is fathers. And uh, that's what the writer said. Scripture says we have, though we have ten thousand teachers in Christ, instructors. You don't have many fathers. And the key thing about fathers is they're able to train up children to understand what it was all about. And I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thankful that, that uh, God has given me 
the desire to stay here. And uh, I don't know, I don't know how good a father I've been, but my kids turned out okay. And uh, I got 18 grandkids and five greats. And uh, if some of my, some more of my grandkids would get with it, I have more great cancer. So uh, anyway. But the family tree has gotten big. But what I've done is I sit here, I sit here after Sunday and, 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 and I thought what we've seen here over the years. We've seen the growth, we've seen, we've seen steadfastness. That doesn't mean that some haven't run, but that's all right. You know, God knows what he's doing. The key ingredient is that whether we're able to be instructed and be not just instructed in facts, but be instructed in family matters. Because that's what God really wants. The, the, if you really study the scriptures, the main ingredient is that the father is building a family. The hardest thing for us to understand we call God Father. He was called Father before he had any kids. That's amazing to me. So, anyway, I'm just rambling on, but I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking and saying, God, where am I going to leave off tonight? Where am I going to start? Where am I going to leave off tonight? Because the next two Thursday nights, uh, Chris has got one, and uh, Nikita's got one, and I'm not who's got what, because uh, I left it up to them to decide which one they want to share. And uh, Tim, Tim said, I'm, I'm into something, Dad. I want to take both Sundays. Next. Um, the first Sunday of the month is his normal week to share. And uh, I almost was going to give it to Barry, and then I told Barry, I said, I want to wait. I want to wait till I get home, because when you share, I want to be here. So uh, that's just one of the things. And we have, we have visiting ministry coming. We're trying to get that. The week, the week after I'm here, uh, Steve Everett and his new bride will be here with us for um, uh, March the 16th, or 17th, 18th, and 19th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, my suggestion is, this is just my suggestion, but I think the ladies ought to get their stuff all together and uh, see if you can have a Saturday morning meeting and Michelle get to share. I mean, she was mentored under Clarice Fluitt, so she She's got a little bit of something to say. So do whatever you want to do. Uh, Steve's going to share with us Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning. And uh, we'll, we'll go with it there. Um, Jean Nicole is supposed to be in from South Africa. Um, I told them that I prefer to have him the last week, the last Sunday of April, if that's available. So I haven't heard back on that, but he will be, we'll have him either that Sunday or the first Sunday in May. Then, Snorton Norton. Bill Norton's gonna be with us. Bill Norton will be with us. He, he's leaving tomorrow for Russia again. And, uh, but Bill Norton will be with us in May. Uh, He's going to be here the 19th and the 20th, Saturday night and Sunday morning. We haven't had Bill here in quite a few years, but uh, he's, he's going to be here. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I don't know. I don't know who else we'll have this year, but I, I'm looking forward to, uh, to this year. I got a feeling that 2018 will be a wonderful year in the Lord. Like I said, um, I enjoyed the skit on Sunday. Um, 
but uh, and I'll admit the burning bush they had couldn't have caught on fire with that fire. <laughs> so, but uh, I thought it was neat, and uh, and and I'm going to need your help. I'm still pr I'm still praying for that burning bush ex experience. You know, I, as I as I've thought about that, you know, when the Lord gave me that thought back in the fall. <coughs> The, the, the most amazing thing about that was that, that burning bush experience wasn't so much uh, an anointing than it was the fact that God got his attention at 80 years old, at 80 years old, to change his ministry. If you think about that. I, I think I've shared it a little bit. All he was doing was shepherding. He was, he was, he was shepherding his father-in-law's sheep. I told my son, I said the one thing, if I get the burning bush experience and I start out at a new, pro, a new program or whatever God wants, I hope God don't try to kill me on the way, because that's what he did to Moses. So. I want to make sure that everything I got is circumcised. Amen? That's for every one of us. Circumcision isn't an option. Circumcision is an absolute necessity. It's when all the excess flesh is cut away in everything in our lives. Amen? Well, praise God, I've just rambled on for 10 minutes now. Turn with me to the gospel according to 1 John. Amen? Last week, um, I shared about walking. In chapter 1, I shared about walking in the light as God is in the light. And uh, I, I want to, one word stuck with me. So I'm going to start reading in verse 5 of the first chapter. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll see where I go from there. Verse 5 of the first chapter. This is the message which we have heard of him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say, th th that statement right there, as I was studying today, that statement got me. We say a lot of stuff. Are y'all listening? We say a whole lot of stuff. I forgot who we were talking to, Sister Fred and I was talking to the other day, and we got talking about the traditions of men. I grew up with tons of traditions of men in the church. Tons of them. And so did a lot of you. Some of us came out of the Roman church some of us came out of this, came out of that, came out of the world. But we had a lot of traditions, if we say. And we held to them was because the group we were connected with at that time, that's all they talked about, if we say. And the more they say it, the more you believe it. Can I say that again? The more you say it, the more you can believe it. But it may not be true. Oh, I know where we were. We were in a car with a Ponte girl. I got it. Because the more you begin to search the book and you begin to search the word, you begin to find out what God is really after what he's really after, what he created man for. I thought as I was praying, all of a sudden I woke up, I said, Lord, we want to see the 42nd generation. I bet you if I stopped right now and asked everybody in here, there's very few of you would even know what the 42nd generation is. Are you listening? There's 14 generations from what? From Adam? 
okay. Then there was another 14 generations. And the last one says, and there was 14 generations to Christ. But if you really check it down in Matthew, when Jesus was born, he was the 13th generation. So the 14th generation has to be a corporate son. But most people don't bother to read that far. I thought it was amazing. Also when they, and I think it's typology, it's always there, everything is typology. When they came up out of Egypt, there were 42 encampments. Uh, you're all going this and you know something you say you know what pastor said he said there was only 13 and I just wonder how many would go dig it out for yourself or oh, there's 42 generations you got to dig it out for yourself it'll take someone to spark that into you but when you begin to dig it out you got to find it that's where I want to go. We just say. And the more we say it, the more we believe it. I have, to, I have to say this. In the 60s, when I first heard the word of the kingdom, what we now call the kingdom, when I first heard the word of the kingdom, as much as I loved my pastor, and he was a father in the word, he taught us how to study. He taught us... But he was a futurist. Are you all listening? He was a futurist. Everything was in the future. I believe in the future. But God's not a futurist. God's an eternalist. He has no beginning. He has no end. He's like Melchizedek. That's why he said to Jesus... You, you are a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Why? Because Malde Melchizedek had no beginning and he had no end. There was no beginning to him and there was no end to him. So when he spoke, he spoke out of eternity. And we're trying to, isn't that how he said to him when he taught, said to him, they said, teach us how to pray, teach us how to pray. He said, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to show you the first thing about it. You first, you've got to recognize who's in charge here. Our Father. Are you listening? And he's not, he's not your Lord. He's not your King. He's your Father. He's there to instruct you. Our Father. Which art in heaven? Well, it's up to you to decide whether heaven's a place or a state of being. Heaven can't hold him. The Bible says so. Well, we just, we just uh, um, buried Norman on Wednesday. And, and everybody's concerned about whether he went to heaven or not. The Bible says he was dead in Christ. You want me to say some more? No one in Christ dies. They live. <laughs> Everyone in Christ is alive. Just because you don't see him anymore doesn't mean he's not alive. I got to be careful. I got to go back to John. Is that all right? But we say stuff. And a lot of times we say stuff that we don't have, we don't have facts to back it up. Because we don't understand the God we have to deal with. Because he's so immense. And the more you find out about him, the more you understand about him, the more you realize you don't know. 
You want to know why? Because he said, he said, let there be, and it's still being. Oh, I better read, okay? <laughs> if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You know what darkness is? Let's just say darkness is ignorance. I'm not saying stupidity. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I think, I think what real stupidity is, is to reject God. Okay? But ignorance is the fact of just not knowing. And I think God, God gives us a real picture of how it works. I, I hear Tim say it all the time. I know where he got it, too. He got it from my oldest son. It's night and day at the same time on the planet. I know in Kenya right now it's eight hours ahead. Okay. So it is eight o'clock here. So it's about four o'clock in the morning. It's just about sunrise in Kenya. Okay. So the sun's just gone down here. It's darkness. But over there, they're just lighting up. They could be reading the same scripture, they could be doing the same thing, but they're in daylight and we're in darkness. Do you understand? You can be taught one thing and be enlightened in that, and you can be someplace else and still be in darkness. But God's purpose is, is to bring light into every situation. We've been transferred out of darkness into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of his dear son. His dear son is the true light. Isn't it Jesus who said, all that ever came before me were thieves and robbers? He wasn't belittling them. What he was saying is they don't have the brightness and the light and the truth and the reality that I walk in. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and we do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, and I, t I dealt with that last night, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Or Can I say it this way? How about all ignorance? If there's a desire within us, to walk in the light. Okay? If you want to walk in the light and be cleansed of all ignorance, ignorance is just what you don't know about God. Ignorance is not, is just what you don't know about the Spirit. Ignorance is what you and I don't know about the things of God. It's plain. Sin, the word for sin. I've said it here. We should all know that by now. Harmatea, what it means to miss the mark. Say, God's got a goal for your life. Ephesians 1 says he's already marked it out. He's already set it in place. You've already been chosen and predestinated for God's divine plan. Are you listening? God's not trying to bring you into darkness. God is bringing you into light. His purpose is light. So our goal is not to get to the light. That means we're missing the mark and we're, we're in sin. If we refuse the light, as he tries, because sometimes, sometimes God's light doesn't make any human sense. I, I'm going to say it again. 
I got to use something over and over and over again so we get to understand. He brought him up out of Egypt, told him he's taking him to the promised land. He said, in the promised land, you're going you're gonna to be blessed. It, it's going to be free. It's going to be, everything's just going to be absolutely, you know, I mean, you're going to live the life of Riley in the promised land. All right? They only had three kingdoms they had to overthrow, overthrow on the way up, but there was 31 once they got inside. Tell me your greatest enemy isn't something that out, it's out there. It's something right here. And so he told him he's taking him to the promised land, okay? But he told him right up front, I'm not going to take you the way of the Philistines. Why? By the way to the Philistines was an 11-day journey. But I'm going to take you this way around, sure, by the way of the wilderness of sure, which ended up being the way of the sin, the wilderness of sin. Guess what they thought? Something's got to be wrong here. Moses brought it out here to kill us. First time they go to get a drink of water, it's bitter. You understand what I'm trying to say? Sometimes God's purposes in enlightenment and teaching doesn't make sense. Not to the natural man, but to the spiritual man it does. What was he doing? He was training them. I'm going to tell you what he was doing. He was getting the Egypt out of them. They'd been down there so long griping and moaning about having to make bricks with no mud. Every little thing they didn't like when they got up there, they're griping and moaning about it. I wouldn't think anybody here would gripe and moan. No way, not us. We all got halos, we got wings. We got the answer to everybody's problems but our own. And if we walk in that light, he will cleanse us. There's an ongoing process of purification that he's working in our heart, in our lives, in our nature. If we say, here we go again, that we have no sin. <laughs> I've been there, you know, I had to fight that, bat, that devil. I got the answer to everything. Y'all been there? Do it my way and it'll always be right. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. You know the biggest thing about deception is the only one that's deceived is you. Everybody else can see that you're blind, stupid, out of the way, and all of that stuff, but you think, oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm right on track. We deceive ourselves, and get this, and the truth is not in us. You mean to tell me I can have the Holy Ghost and the truth be not be in me? Yeah, you're not letting him work. You're not letting him do his part. I, I told you, I've said this here a hundred thousand times. I always loved it when we went to see Fran Japan. That was back in, back in the 80s. We went to see Fran Japan down to Connecticut. And, and this lady passed a note up and said, can a Christian have a demon? He said, if he wants one. You can do whatever you want to do. 
What God is trying to do is to get us to be willing. The sons of God are led. They're led by the Spirit. Are you listening? They're led. You know a lot of times you have to wait. The truth is not in us. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, I love this statement. This is one of the most positive statements I ever had. And if you say you never messed up, I got news for you. Just wait. There's always tomorrow. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He what? If we do one thing, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I want, I want to turn over to Proverbs. Is that all right? I want to, I want to read Proverbs 28. Uh, it's over here someplace. Proverbs 26, 28, and 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. <laughs> you know, I can mess up and hide it from Fran. <laughs> but I can't hide it from God. <laughs> you know what my kids used to say? We might as well tell you, Dad. You're going to find out anyway. <laughs> he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But listen to this. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. He didn't say just confess. He said forsake. Confession is not good enough. God wants you to turn. I think I had another one. Oh, yeah. I know. I, I, I thought. Psalm 51. I read this at the funeral. Um, I want to I read this. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from any sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil thing thing in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when you speak and be clear when you judge behold I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts we can always put on the face but God wants truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is Jesus. It's a person. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 10. 1 John 1, verse 10. If we say we have not sinned, we, now that, that, that means we were born okay, we never have. I hear that kind of stuff all the time. The world out there thinks they're all okay. All you got to, you, you know, you just got to listen to people talk. 
They think they were born okay. That isn't what this book says. This book says we all carry Adam's sin. There's nobody born without it. The only person who was ever born of a woman without it was Jesus. So we never can say, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And the, and the word for word there is speech. I don't know about you, but I'd sooner be able to declare his words than try to get my point across. Chapter 2. I'm probably going to go a couple of verses here for the night. My dear children, I, I love this statement. The word is technon. I've mentioned it before. It means, it means that it's, uh, he loves these people he's writing to. He has great desire for them. And, and in this uh, way, he said, my little children, my dear children. So in other words, they're not, they're not little teeny kids, but they're new Christians, new believers. My dear children, these things I write to you. What did he say before he wrote to them? That their joy may be full. Okay? Now he says, these things I write to you that you sin not. In other words, what he's trying to say to them, if you don't have sin in your life, you're not going to have any misery. You're going to have joy. And if any man sin, listen to this, we have an advocate or paraclete with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. What is, a, what is the advocate, the paraclete? We got one who can stand before the judge of all things. Are you listening? I always, get a, I always get a kick out of all these lawyers that run these ads on the TV, you know. One's always getting you more than the other one. Are you listening? And, the, and they all lie. I, I, I chuckle at the ones that say, well, you know, if, if you, if you, most lawyers don't want to go to court most lawyers don't want to go to court. They want the insurance company to settle up easy. Okay? But they're not saying that every time he goes to court, it costs you another $1,200. My little children, these things I write to you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation. He can argue because he's the guarantee. He's the one that finished the work. He's the one that corrected all things. He is the propitiation for our sins. And listen to this. Not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word there is cosmos. The whole arrangement of things. Say that everything in the world is out of order. It's bound in sin. The only way to take it out is when Jesus Christ in intervenes and comes into the life of the individual and changes them. Most people are waiting for Jesus to come back and do something. I want to tell you what, Calvary did it. That's a finished work. Help me, Lord. 
makes me want to preach, and I just want to teach you. He's here. We think that Jesus is not coming. Uh, am I going to mess everybody up again? I'm going to make some dumb statement like the second coming already happened on the day of Pentecost when he showed up in another form called the Holy Ghost because he said in John 14 he said I and the Father will come and indwell you say he's here he's in a people if I received him he's in me and he's fixing what's wrong Help me, Lord. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. I, 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 got, I don't want to get too deep into this, okay, because there's so much to cover here. Jesus said in another place in John 14, he said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Now, sometimes, sometimes we have a problem because the word gets in the way okay the word commandments doesn't mean like a military sergeant barking orders the word commandment here could just as easily be translated if you would keep my sayings the proof of your love is you keep my word oh we love you Jesus Jesus said, how can you, in one, one place, I think it's in the Gospel of John, I think it's chapter 15, how is it you can, you can say, Lord, 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 and you don't keep my sayings, my commandments. Let me read this one. I want to read this one. What is it? It's over in Revelation chapter 22. If I can remember the verse. Oh, yes. Chapter 22 of the book of Revelation. You know, that's the time way down there someplace. Or it's right now as God unveils and reveals. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Isn't that something? Blessed are they that do his commandments that they might have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. Well, what if, what if you don't keep his word? You may not get in the gates of the city. You might not be able to eat of the tree of. Everybody wants a tree. God, I wish I had a life tree growing in my backyard, you know, so. The real tree of life is inside of you. The real tree of life is the spirit of the living God living inside of you. It's there for the healing of the nations. I mean, imaginations. Let's take all them wild imaginations out of your mind and get the realm of the spirit working inside. Let me just read this again. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. For without our dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Remember what he said back here in First John about not having the truth? He that maketh a lie. 
What is the key thing here? The key thing here is the Word of God, beloved. We got to allow the Holy Ghost to speak the Word of God into our lives and make adjustments. Even if the Word brings truth and it reveals darkness in us. And hereby we do know that if we know him, if we keep his commandments, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected or completed or matured. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. I could go further, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. We're going to do what? We're going to keep his word. We're going to search his word. We're going to allow the Holy Ghost to talk into the innermost of our heart. We won't attack the word of God saying, I know what that means. You wanna know why? You wanna know why? Because God's moving us on. I, I, I chuckled the other night, Steve Everett, when he was on, uh, he was on Facebook Live the other night, uh, Tuesday night and one of the things one of the things he brought up was about his former pastor Bishop Saunders Sanders and, uh, and he told a story he said Bishop Sanders was having trouble with his heart and he said uh, we'd gone to a meeting and he said he told me to drive and he got in the back seat and laid down and the bishop said this to Steve, he said, one thing you always do, never vary from the truth. Always preach the kingdom and declare the third day. And when he said that, it struck me in my innermost. And I quickly typed back to Steve and said, Steve, I'm so glad that you continued to preach the third day because that's what became the basis of our friendship. The majority of people are just interested in getting people saved and going to heaven. Do you know what God's purpose was? Trying to get us to grow up. It's an Isaiah 61 reality. Rise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of God. God, they want to see it. They want to see Zion. The picture was the temple, Solomon's temple, was the picture of Zion. It was to be seen from the whole world. Till the answer was like the Queen of Sheba. The half has not ever been told. Once I saw it, once you see the fullness of what God's trying to do in the life of you and me and every individual, once the world gets a, gets a hold of what God really is trying to do in your life, guess what? You'll be like the Pied Piper. You won't be able to keep them away. Want to know why? Because love wins. You don't think so, why do you say? God so loved the world that he gave. Amen? Shall we stand? And before we leave tonight, 
Um, Sister Fran and I and Danny and Irene, we want to get prayed for. Oh, you're going bye-bye too? Oh. Oh, that's right. Sure, Anna.